Okay, welcome everybody uh, to the uh, Bookmap Pro Trader webinar series here uh, on institutional traders. And uh, we've had uh, really great events so far, as you guys know. Monday, we had Robert Rother, a hedge fund manager. Uh, yesterday, in the morning, we had another hedge fund manager, uh, Spencer Riegel. Uh, a regal and then uh, later that day we had uh, Brad Gilbert a bank trader uh, and then today uh, we have another bank trader here uh, Marco Bozing and uh, uh, has um, uh, lots of experience in here uh, tomorrow we'll have Scott Pulsini and Brett Steenbarger uh, so it's a prop trader and a psychologist you might have read the book uh, by Brett where he kind of canonized uh, Scott and then uh, Friday we'll round it out with uh, Al Vingemore another hedge fund manager so uh, uh, Marco if you can go to the next slide all right so we'll go through the disclosures quickly guys and then we'll uh, get into a few more news uh, items and then let Marco uh, have at it. Uh, so general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Next slide. All right, so um, this institutional trader webinar uh, is combined really uh, why we're doing institutional traders uh, is because next week we're going to have our CME our first CME competition uh, so if you're interested in this go to competition.bookmap.com we're going to give you a million dollars in simulated funds uh, to trade so you're going to have to trade a little differently now it's not a whole lot of money it's not 10 million it's not 25 million or 100 million uh, however it's enough to have to trade differently uh, and you can get in a lot of trouble really quickly uh, even with uh, you know 100 or 180 lots or whatever it is that uh, maxes it out uh, so learn from these guys uh, during this week uh, and then some of the tips and tricks you can apply next week starting october 29th uh, and uh, get set up all right so uh, join the competition uh, so uh, looking forward to it uh, Marco next next slide uh, a bit of news here uh, our beta programs uh, if you're interested in getting access to our new multi account add-on or new market pulse uh, heat map or uh, other products we have several uh, then just reach out to us and say you want access uh, the email is beta at bookmap.com and uh, describe what uh, you're looking for or you know what you want access to uh, we also have our blue jacket competition that we do every month that started October 10 uh, and then we'll have our bookmap Academy meeting uh, as per usual uh, Thursdays market close uh, we're gonna uh, change them a little differently for the next week we'll be going through a lot of the competition uh, content uh, but uh, looking forward to that so uh, next slide and uh, okay all right so today Marco Bozing this is in discord only right now uh, it is recorded uh, but that recording will be uh, later uh, in the in the uh, uh, or like in, in a few days or so uh, so uh, uh, yeah let's uh, uh, move on to the next slide and uh, Marco I'm gonna let you uh, give your uh, background your history what how you got involved in trading and and the and the bank trading that you did uh and then uh, take it from there thank you bruce hi i'm marco so well let's try it that way my english is not the best one so i will try i will try really what i can and uh, since i spoke english it's well it's a long time ago so i, I will try my best but yeah i'm um, i'm based in germany i'm a german and I also yeah, grow up here and my institutional background is completely in German roots. This means that I was trading for a German company. We managed money and I was a junior forex trader. But it wasn't just by luck that I landed there. I had more than luck. I had a friend who was working for a big institution and he had just basically told me about trading. He showed me the trading skills and said, hey, 
do you think this is something for, for me? And I said, well, yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, I saw the markets, I directly got hooked up and I thought, wow, awesome. This is something really cool. So I learned a little bit about it, uh, you know, just retail stuff, nothing special. But later on, he just managed to get me through a trainee program um, to participate in the bank. So I participated and I succeeded and I got a job as a junior forex trader. And since then, I'm a trader. I mean, I love it to trade it's really pretty awesome and I had the pure luxury luck in my life that somebody just take me by hand and pulled me over to a bank and this is something really great because I saw I saw the game first as a retail trader and then I saw the game directly from the from the big institutions I mean just like a desk saw how to move millions over millions of dollars or euros and how the market is traded that way because it is for us retail trader it's easy it's just a push of a button and we can enter and exit a market but it's not possible for us big institutions i mean we can also push buttons but we have to push it thousand times a day for for the big big um, accumulation of positions we need or we have to enter or, or exit and this is some completely different level of trading if you think about it and this is something we want to discover and yeah well i started with my trading at around about 2005 it was late 2005 i started it's, it should be november or september something like that it's it's, it's pretty late i remember uh, specifically that it was before youtube got launched in germany so there wasn't youtube um, before i started trading This is what I remember. It is something like September or something like that, 2005 here in Germany. So a uh, pretty funny story, but I remember it. And here, my last year in the, in the institution as a bank trader was 2010, something like the end of 2010. It, it must be October, I think, 2010 when I left. And that's it. Since then, I'm just like, uh, like my own trader. I mean, self-employed and just trade for myself and for a big client. And that's what I do. And after, yeah, of course, after my um, institutional time, I uh, go to the university, study a little bit physics. Also, I did something at Harvard, um, so just just for me, some uh, some little things. And that's basically it, what I did. So, but I would say, let's go over the market, speak a little bit, and I hopefully my English will get better and better over the time. I also have my Deeple or um, translator that I will find everything. What I like to do is just ask me questions. Bruce is here, he can monitor it. Um, just ask your questions, type your questions and we can speak about a lot of things uh, for trading. Um, just a quick reminder, I was a Forex junior trader. This means different regulations than to trade via the CME. Here now it's CME, I mean it's the S&P 500 as the future of course and these are CME products. I traded as an institution not the CME products, I traded just forex spot and swap markets. These are different markets but anyway the behavior is similar because as a big institutional trader we also have order books and we also have of course times and sales lists. Um, something the normal retail guy do not have with forex but thanks bookmap and thanks futures we will have it because these products are traded or, um, on, on the stock exchange. Okay perfect so with that out of the way we can start. Where I can see questions, Bruce, um, where I have to look? Ah, ah, it, it's here. okay. I, yeah, they're, they're on the side, but... Uh, ah, yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, oh. And I, I can ask them as well, uh, perfect. whatever you prefer. Awesome. Yeah, let, let's do it um, uh, both ways. I, th I think sometimes okay. they will not see everything. I see now just good afternoon. Okay, good afternoon at all. Just ask your questions about the market. For example, how to enter with size. Because as I remember right, then next week you have the luxury to trade f with 1 million uh, asset under management. And it doesn't seem like it is a lot. But you know, if you trade on an account with 1 million dollar, it's not that easy to enter. Yeah, of course, if you trade the S&P 500, it will working. But for example, if you trade the DAX, so the FDAX, well, it's not that easy, I can tell you directly. Or for example, if you trade the NASDAQ, it's also not that easy because the problem is liquidity. In the S&P 500, yes, you, you can just push. For example, right now, if we go inside, we see here how 
deep the pockets are on the different tick levels. And if you trade now, I don't know, let's say 100 contracts, then you will sweep through the book, maybe one or two ticks. A sweep, what does it mean? Well, I think the most of you know that sweeping means that you get slippage. This means you want to, ex uh, to enter here or exit, uh, doesn't matter which way, and you push the button, for example, market buy, and then you will sweep through the book this is what's called sweeping uh, through the book and directly you, en uh, you, you enter here the position or you will move the price into that direction. Why? Because there isn't a lot of liquidity. And this is the big, big, big problem we institutional traders face every day. And because of that, we have, oh, now a word is missing for me. I have to describe it. And this is something we as institutional traders um, have a fight with ourselves, not really with the markets, but more with ourselves, with ourselves, because I need to get liquidity. There are a lot of, um, well, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say holy grails, but, but, but there are a lot of different kind of workarounds to get liquidity. Most of them are not allowed via the CME trading, but uh, of course, as an institutional bank trader, when you trade only with banks, it's allowed, but not with the CME. So you have to use different things. For example, you need to find a uh, campaign. You need to structure your trading, not to trade directly at all or offer something, but you have to wait and manage and execute your trades more like a retail trader. For example, if you has to, uh, have to uh, if you have to enter 100,000 contracts, ch just for example, then you can't just enter it with five trades. Then you need maybe uh, 75,000 trades. And this is something you can't do manually. You need to use algos. And you just, as a trader, you just uh, use these algos. And that's the thing I did. I just was sitting there and said, okay, well, I have to enter long, a long position in the euro dollar. We call it fiber, um, in the fiber. So, and my, my boss came or my chef came and say, Marco, you have to enter long position, 100,000 lots. Okay, 100,000 lots it is, perfect. And of course, as always, as best price possible. Not best price per trade, but best price um, in, uh, with all my positions. I mean, 100,000 lots. This means around about 75,000 trades. Uh, it's that crazy, but it is. So, I then just think for myself, okay, where's the market, where's liquidity, where I can get a lot of liquidity at a good price and then I just go and use the specific algorithm I think I can use to get the liquidity. And this is what I did basically. And when I want, when I has to enter the market in the long direction, I also had a little bit of play money to push the market on other sides. For example, I could push the market on the downside just to get better entries. For example, better liquidity at a better price. This was allowed in forex trading. And it was manageable at Forex trading because we had an open book. It was always full with orders on both sides, long and shorts, and we just managed the long and the shorts. It was quite funny as something what you can't do with the CME. Um, it's not allowed there, but with Forex trading, it's allowed. So, and this is what I used. This is what I did back then. But now, I mean, I'm not an institutional trader anymore. I'm just an an, an ex-institutional trader. Right now, I'm just a retail trader like everybody, just with a knowledge and with a little bit of, of um, insights, what I saw, that's it. So what I can do and use today is just to think like a big trader, by, but act like a retail trader. And this is awesome. Because you know what? We, we have a big problem, and this big, big problem is also our biggest opportunity as a trader. We can always trade. This is a really big problem. We always can trade all the time. A really big pro problem. But it's also our biggest surplus or how to say our, our biggest ad, um, advent, not adventure. It's our biggest um, opportunity we have anyway. So it's awesome that our biggest, biggest thing to make money is also the biggest thing that will destroy us. Because if we always can trade means that we can always do something stupid, 
But we also always can enter the market and exit the market with, without leaving big footprints. But the big one, they can't. So for example, right now, we see there is a big, big limit order. Okay, well, perfect. These big limit orders, well, it's more likely like, like an iceberg order as it unfolds. It seems like an iceberg order. And we as retail traders, we do not need it because why I, why I need to, to put something down there like 500 uh, contracts um, because I can't trade that big. So, But a big institution needs to do it. This is maybe a 5,000 contract um, order. Uh, we do not see it right now, but it seems like you see the, the white line here in bookmap. It's really awesome. It's the It's good data because we see now this is coming all from one big player. You know, it's really awesome to see, and it's definitely something worth to see if you want to trade um, on on a really short time frame, um, like with futures, for example. But we do not need it. We can enter the market and exit the market all the time. We could trade from up there to down there. A big player can't do it. He has a big problem. He would sweep completely the market. He needs something like this one and the thing is a lot of people think oh well he is now liquidity 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 and it should rise you know what typically this is not something that will hold up sometimes yes the market will rally but most of the time think now as a big institutional trader next week you have to do it by yourself when you want to enter the market with 100,000 contracts and your boss told you you should go short what would you do would you now wait or ex exactly now you would enter the market short? Exactly, you would enter the market now short. Why? Everybody thinks now trade long, 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 but not as an institutional trader. If your boss told you, you go short, then you go short. And where you do it? When you get the best possible price and also size possible, of course. And where it is? Right now it's there. This is the best um, the best possible way to enter the market short in a good price without um, without moving the market because well there is another player in the market who wants to buy and this is the perfect way Let, let's look here you see um, we are here approaching this level and the market you see this is the cumulative delta. We see a lot of bits, bits, bits. This is why it's go negative. This means a lot of sellers in the market and they sell into the liquidity. I mean, it's just liquidity there. It's nothing else. Perfect. This is exactly what I mean. If you need to sell, you sell there. But retail traders think this is a place where you need to go long. Yeah, well, sometimes it's true, but most of the times it is something for bigger traders to hunt for liquidity. You will see by yourself next week with 1 million what it's going to be. And you see right now it's not holding up. But yeah, the usual retail trader mind thinks about, oh, there's someone big and he wants to buy. Oh, perfect. It's going long. Well, not so fast. It is more like advertising for other big institutional traders just to bite into it. And this is what we see right now. So you have to think differently. And even as, as a retail trader, it, it helps me a lot to understand the market structure, how the market is moving, how I can enter the market with that knowledge from the institutional time, of course. And now I am free because I can trade every time, all the time. And this is awesome. As a big trader, of course, I couldn't trade that. I mean, right now, easy peasy for me just to enter short and perfect, I'm in the market. As a big institutional trader, I can't short there for a profit because what I can profit, well, two ticks and then I sweep the market, well, it will not help me anyway. I mean, I will not make bucks from it. But as a private trader, I can do it. This is perfect. So um, just to think a little bit um, about that one. Okay, perfect. Now, um, Bruce, are there some questions with my not yes. so good English. Yes. Uh, so uh, actually, this is a really, really great uh, right off the bat, uh, Marco. So, um, and a question that, that I have uh, regarding uh, what you just covered um, and the way that we have covered it uh, here in the bookmap education uh, is okay. We have a high level of liquidity uh, that uh, was on the bid there. Uh, and we want to still understand, and that's those are buyers. That's you know passive passive buyers. The sellers met the buyers, uh, but we always look and try to understand after some of that 
transacts is there still uh, more supply by the aggressors uh, and you're defining this and in, in saying like yes this is how larger players are are playing the game uh, and look what it did uh, price went down to the next level of liquidity uh, and traded into there uh, and then now we're starting to see a bit of a reaction from aggressive buyers not passive buyers uh, can you maybe um, uh, go through the the narrative uh, or the story of um, of what's happening right now okay the thing is easy um, I, I think I have to start again just for me because of the English um, skill so let's see this one this is liquidity and this means these are passive buyers these passive buyers offer liquidity for all the sellers out there and it's visible for everybody who understands the game I mean you see it right here it's big red this means a lot of passive buyers this means i can now enter the market with market trades this means i am completely certain to enter the market but i do not know which price but thanks a lot that there is a big limit with an iceberg order behind it this means i can enter the market without moving the market I do not move the market and I know I have certainty to enter it because I use a market order and market order means I definitely get into the market. I just do not know the price. But thanks a lot to bookmap here. I see it. There is liquidity and this means I can enter it without moving the market. This is what big institutional players use because they know they don't move the market. They can enter short if their boss told them to go short. Perfect. That, that's what's happening there. After the, after, um, the liquidity um, got um, uh, liquidated, no, not liquidated, sorry, uh, bought after, or, or sold <laughs> in, in, in that particular way, the market was free to move till the next liquidity. And that's there. There was the next liquidity. It's again, it's a new price with a, with, um, a certainty I can enter the market short. But now is the difference. It's a this price is more, um, it's worse than before because now I have to pay more for my short position because if I am a short trader, this means now it's not that good of price anymore for my position because I always, or, or the reason why I'm an institutional trader or why the bank has institutional traders and algos um, is to get better prices. If the trader can't get a good price with size this means it's not useful for him to be a trader anymore so he gets fired of course uh, even in Germany there's then higher and fire <laughs> uh, but usually we do not have this but the bank uh, system does have it at all so this means we are coming down more down more down the prices are definitely worse than before and this means then well let's sit back and wait we push now the markets a little bit this means a lot of traders now maybe think it comes a turnaround they then buy the market up here and then maybe we as institutions can enter later again because i see something really interesting i see here well, not a lot of buyers. I mean, you use yourself. There are not a lot of buyers, just a few of them. But these few buyers here, they push the markets directly higher. That's really interesting how they can push the markets higher when there are um, badly some buyers we can see in the cumulative delta. Well, they can do it if the book here is completely thin. And you see there's almost nothing we see it in bookmap it's that color here it's light um, uh, so something like dark blue or something like that and we see, or navy blue and we see nothing almost no liquidity at all and this means the market is just moving around because of um, uh, how to say it in english like uh, marktrauschen one moment i need that word i just google it Ah, market noise, of course, sorry. <laughs> uh, this is just pure market noise that is moving the market again in favor for the institutional seller to sell the market. And we know already that the institutional seller is definitely um, looking into selling the market because he did it here, this one. He just pushed through it. He took the, um, the effort to go through the market there and this is why we know they want to go short. So let's look what happened. I don't know. 
okay, it's just sideways, um, something uh, still market noise, as we can see here. Uh, right now, nothing has happened. We can look a little bit of liquidity there. It's coming up here a little bit there and it's starting again. It's building up, but it's just the algorithm here. Mm, maybe something there. Okay, we have to wait what will happen. But this is how we have to look at the market as retail traders right now, because we just follow the big institutions, because they move the market. And beside that, markets move the market. Liquidity or uh, limit orders are just a form of possible transaction, but they are only possible. It doesn't mean they have to come through, but they are possible. Really important is always the transaction that are coming through. And we see the transaction right now um, as this thing here unfold directly live in front of us is more short. Till there is enough uh, liquidity in the books of the institution and then it's over, of course, and then we have to wait till the next push. But right now there is nothing. Buyers are not really here. I do, I do not see really big buyers are stepping up. I mean, there is some little push, but it's, well right now meaningless <laughs> you know we just have to wait till we see something else but th these are the little things just what's happening there liquidity is offered what is what has happened with that liquidity and somebody said nope i will sell and this guy just not sell here they sell they also sold here maybe they will also sell here now let's see what will happen but this is the thing we have to look at it and Later that week, oh no, next week, when you trade more like a big institutional, then you have to think for yourself how you can trade with limit orders because then then you can't really just use markets. Yes, in the S&P 500 you can. But if you trade, for example, the FDAX with 1 million size, uh, forget it. You will move the market. You will sweep through the book. It's really a big problem. So um, uh, I'm really excited to see what will happen then in futures there okay right now the s p can't give us something but you know we can see something different we see a lot of liquidity here in the nasdaq this is the nasdaq and we see that um, over there there is a lot of liquidity and there will definitely some liquidity hunt and you know that the nasdaq and the s p 500 of course have a strong correlation because there is almost 100 uh, stocks what's in the nasdaq is also uh, present here in the s p 500 so they do correlate each other uh, really well and right now it should be a push there for liquidity it seems like nice this is great uh yeah really really great marco uh uh let, let's see um there's some some other questions in here uh, regarding uh, uh, the accumulation, uh, and is there a difference between the swap market uh, and the spot? Uh, and then mm -hmm. uh, how does liquidity work in the swaps? Uh, is it relevant for us retail, uh, uh, retailers? Oh, it's, it's, uh, if you can understand this, then this is it's, um, completely important because the spot market you do not pay swaps <laughs> and the swap market you need to pay the swaps or you get the swaps and this is of course a big big difference in position sizing and in uh, speculation long term because if you just trade the spot market then you you are more like an not like gambling uh, but more like some like a poker player you play your cards you try to play your your little edge and and just play it out if you enter the swap market what um, the big liquidity comes from the, the forex market as a lot of liquidity is in the swap market then you earn swaps you more like a strategic player for example you are buying the Aussie dollar against the Japanese yen because you earn swaps or interest during your trade or you buy for example for the last three years just the dollar against the Japanese yen because you borrow Japanese yen put it into dollar and this this money you also end, uh, let, uh, this this money you take and invest in the S&P 500 and you earn double there because you enter just uh, you 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 gain money through let's say the, the the swap market from the dollar against the japanese yen 
and you gain also the position increasing because the dollar yen is rising and you end, uh, you gain money because of the S&P 500. This is something you do with the swap market and this is definitely something for big strategic player who do not use stop losses for example. So you just enter the market, it's a lot of liquidity in there. Uh, you use the T2 um, delivery system then. It's uh, maybe may something too deep, but it doesn't matter. You heard it now, T2 delivery system, and just go there and take your, um, uh, uh, how, to, how to say, one moment. Yeah, it's not that good that my English is so bad right now. <laughs> you um, summon, collect, ah, yeah, exactly, of course, collect. You collect and just your interest, and you have just a nice, uh, I don't know, 3.5 or 4% more earnings per year so why not why not do it it's a completely different market and it's more like a strategic play um, with the swap market it's definitely not so good for some traders or retail traders because usually they trade against the swaps and they have to pay the swaps That's something that it's not good so Definitely better to just trade than the futures because you do not need to look at the swaps if you are paying it or you're getting it. It's better if you trade the futures and you can see what is happening and unfolding in real time like here with, for example, here with the liquidity. Or like this one we already to, um, told or spoke about that the market is likely to come there because the liquidity is offered. You can't see it in the swap market unless you are um, a trader at the bank because then of course you have the open book but as a retail trader you never will, to, you never will get to see it. No chance. They will not give you this yeah. information. I had it but yeah well I was sitting in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a totally different game uh, as a bank trader. You have you have the book like that. Uh, you have all the transactions. Um, and um, uh, I'm wondering though, like when you see that kind of liquidity, and when you were uh, you know trading uh, big size, uh, would you maybe use some of that play money to get price to go down there, and then maybe the uh, the it's really kind of a uh, a red herring or a trap. In essence, the guy pulls that those orders, uh, this kind of game gaming back and forth. You mean this situation right now? Yeah, like for for right now. I mean, uh, like it, we see the aggressive buyers driving price up there. Uh, now this is a ton of liquidity in in the Nasdaq. Yes. Uh, and the transactions are taking place. But what if you what if you know um, maybe uh, maybe it's after hours or something? Uh, you try to drive. You want the transaction. Uh, you want to drive price up there, and maybe you do, and then the guy pulls his liquidity uh, ah, at the yeah. last mm -hmm. second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. First, if we see that there's liquidity like this in the in the Nasdaq, I mean, it's around about a half an hour after the market is getting short, and it's moving. Yes, but it's definitely an algorithmic trader or some uh, or some big um, collection of 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 a limit order who is a trader just track and drop um, through the markets. I mean. It's instantly, it, it goes away from here and directly appears again there. I mean, this is algorithmic or a big trader with just one big order and pushing the, the, the markets, uh, the limit orders up and down. And this is something, it's real. It doesn't seem like that is somebody that is pulling away, but it can happen. And this is why we definitely do not push the market from there directly up to there we use a manipulative way to move the markets. This means maybe enter some shots here to get down there, to enter there a long position, close our short position, move the market aggressively, wait a little bit till, for example, some retailers enter the market or other guys maybe think it's overbought, so they sold again, then we can enter a little bit in the long direction, wait, then there is another liquidity hunt, just we see the market is there flat, just enter some little short positions, push the market down, enter aggressively long and so on. We, we work our way through the, through, um, the market towards liquidity, but not just with push, 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 or buy, 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 buy. So we more use like um, buying, buying, buying. Let's wait a little bit with the buying, maybe some shorts, uh, maybe cover a little bit, then uh, buy back again. So we, we more like a wave, a wave on, on the upward um, way to, towards liquidity. Because just go for the liquidity, well, you will get... Um, 
You will lose your job really fast <laughs> because this is not why you are hired as an institutional trader. You are hired to get better prices. You have a lot of liquidity in your hand. You have a little bit, you have a little bit play money. You need to use it. If you do not use it, well, you will not stay long um, a bank trader because uh, why we do need why we need someone who just can't play with the markets. Just to push by, well, it will not help you because then you just sweep through the book and everybody else can spook you and you will not likely enter the market at a good price. And a good price is, is what's all, uh, what is the, the ultimate goal for us big bank traders. So this is why we need then more like a characteristic of some manipulative way. It's not like a manipulation, like something it is a buy sell. And because of buy and selling, you can create false moves. You can create something like that somebody is thinking, oh, well, now they are selling. But instead of that, you are buying. For example, flipping. I mean, flipping is not allowed in the CME. You can't do it here. In, uh, you can do it here in the C, uh, with the CME products, but it's not allowed. But of course, in the in the forex market, uh, there is no one who controls it. You can flip all the, all day long, and this means you, you can, for example, go on the ask side and say, "Well, here on the ask side, ten thousand contracts," and other people see this and say, "Oh, whoa, whoa, there is somebody extremely selling," and then they front run you. And after they front run you, you directly can flip, and then you go and, and then you enter passive buyers. Um, um, I mean, limit buys, and you can get better prices. This is something that happens all the day in the forex market because it, it is legal but with CME products it's illegal but if you look closely you will find it and this is something for example I, I look for for example like this one it's uh, uh, pretty um, normal somebody here is like flipping it's like using some tactical orders let, let's put it that way just to get the price for one two ticks or in the, in the Nasdaq maybe uh, three four points better and then enter the market it's just a mind game nothing else just a mind game Wow, that is great to hear. Um, a question on uh, some of the algos and, and how you're uh, able to uh, kind of get in and out here. Um, it, well, first off, the question is about uh, uh, did you have an algo developer uh, back then? Uh, and then, or do they just give you kind of a, uh, a cache or a, a number of algos and say, hey, use this to get a better price here oh, mm -hmm. or use this one to get a price there? No, no, we had a bunch of algo algos. I learned about the algos. I knew how every algo is working and I just had to think for myself which algo is now the best one. And there was um, a different kind of algorithm because, um, of course, with sizes of up to 100,000 contracts, you can't just click 70,000 five times for yourself on the keyboard. I mean, the keyboard would definitely burning after the trading day. So you use algorithm and you have to learn how to use this algorithm and what they do. And this is what I learned. And then I just decided for myself which one I take. Of course, all in the, um, um, how to say, all in the uh, Rahmen. I don't know now a word. Let's just all in. Um, in the frame oh yeah nice yeah sorry oh, uh, of course I had a frame and I have to operate in the frame and yeah that that's mm. that's the thing I did so um, some algorithm for example something that's really really easy is just the VWAP but attention not the VWAP you see here. This is just a daily VWAP. Of course, we didn't use the daily VWAP as, as institutional traders. We use the VWAP we own create. For example, if I have, um, if I need to buy 5,000 contracts and I can say, perfect, let's buy it over in VWAP algorithm. Then this algorithm doesn't mean that he buys at this VWAP. This is just the, the, the VWAP of the day. This doesn't matter at all. What I needed was my own VWAP. This means if I say right now I want to buy 5,000 contracts about the next, let's say, um, two and a half minutes, for example. Of course, uh, better, better is to take five or 10 minutes with that size, but let's say two and a half minutes. Then I going down there and say, now I start, then uh, let's take white. Now I start, then this is my starting point. So here I start now the algorithm and the algorithm is buying over the VWAP. And the VWAP is now here anchored as here. Um, Bookmap also has this function. You can use it. You can just 
um, anchor your VWAP there and then just let it walk two and a half minutes and you get a VWAP that is something looking like this for example and then the VWAP is spying only at this specific VWAP when you started it so you have to learn when to start the anchoring of the VWAP, um, this means first you have to find the institutions, then you start your anchoring and then you see how they are buying. And the VWAP is something like, uh, the VWAP algorithm is something like 30% of the time that's being used. It's one of the most widely used um, algorithm by the by the institutions. But again, not the VWAP of the day. It's always the anchoring VWAP when they start to enter positions because they always fight against themselves because they trade with size. Uh, I hope I could explain it uh, good enough. That was, in that that was fantastic. Um, so, uh, in fact, that was the next question uh, was going to be about uh, how you uh, had to view fair value uh, for entering, uh, you know, more size, uh, because, uh, you know, you, you, clearly you have to do it over time. Uh, and then there has to be some sort of gauge uh, that you consider like this is a bot, I can continue to buy at this point, or at that point. Uh, and uh, what did you use? Ah, um, in my institution, we had our ratings was always against the volume profile because the volume, the daily volume profile shows what was possible to trade at which prices and how much size and what I actually accumulated. So after the trading day, I always got rated against the volume profile. This means for me, it was always interesting to see how much contracts got traded on a specific price via the whole day because i always got rated every day every night what the the, the volume profile looked like so this was for me it was really important uh, to see where where my assessment was because if i see that i am definitely five points worse than the vwop and uh, sorry as the volume profile then I know if I continue this path, then, well, I will definitely get fired uh, or go on the hot seat. And if I am better, of course, so if it is possible for me to enter good um, um, prices against the volume profile, then I know I am in the right way. And this is something you have to do for yourself. I mean, nobody will tell you where to enter. They say, they say roundabout there and there. I mean, the analysts, they, uh, of course, we traders do not decide if we go short or long. The analysts say us, we go long, we go short with that size. Roundabout there and there. And this is everything we have. We just enter the market on with the best price possible. We do not think about which direction. We do not think about it because this is a whole different level of, of workaround from another people with another professions. We as traders have just one clear goal get the best price possible with size. And this is what we did. This is what I did. And this is um, definitely the game that is played in big institutions for forex trading. And yeah, I got evaluated or, or, or rated against the volume profile of the day. Every day I had to fight against the, the damn thing. <laughs> I mean, this, uh, this thing is moving throughout the day. It's not easy, I can tell you. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, it, it, it sounds quite stressful, uh, it is. <laughs> actually. Uh, and uh, you're under the gun uh, and, uh, and you have to pay quite uh, close attention as well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and, and yeah, and not slip uh, a, price, a price against you. Um, I'm wondering, like, a, if, so, if you're given the task, like you said, I mean, just incredible size here, like, you know, 100,000 lots uh, in Euro USD. Uh, how long would it take you on just a roundabout figure and on average uh, that uh, it would take for that order to go through? Oh, you, you, you need quite, quite some time. We speak about, um, oh, how it calls, one moment. Schichtarbeit. Now I have to look. Shift work. Oh, I never heard that word in English. Okay, it's um, we worked in shifts. I mean, um, it, you, you know, we we, it, we was based, of course, in Germany, but we had shifts there. There was people working at night, morning, and during the day. So we had shift work, and we was like a, we was a group, and we worked together. And we um, every we got the book, and we put the book always forward to the next uh, shift. 
And uh, we worked sometimes weeks for specific orders. For example, like 100,000 um, lots, we worked definitely three to four days for such a big order. Sometimes it, it, it was even longer and sometimes it was, of course, faster. It all depends on the flow of money and <laughs> somebody is writing shift work in Schichtarbeit. Awesome. <laughs> and it definitely depends also on on the, the markets we traded. For example, if you trade just a spot market, well, it's not that easy. If you combine it, for example, with other desks, for example, the option desks, and you could um, work out some little deals, then you could get it faster because on different uh, markets, there are different size of liquidity, of course. And it depends really how much this was all um, connected because what I traded was just, I, I just was the trader for our own team. I mean, I did not work for clients. I mean, I had clients, but my clients was always in the bank, not clients outside, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, regardless of the different shifts and the different traders, uh, your shift is going to be graded a specific way of how much size that you were able to get on uh, compared to fair value of the um, profile. Ah, um, so roundabout, you um, let's say twenty five thousand roundabout. Sometimes, uh, some sometimes less, sometimes more, but roundabout twenty five thousand con uh, contracts or lots. Sorry, you can get for uh, for the euro USD. Roundabout, like that one. Dur during your session. Yes, one wow. session. Wow, that's incredible. Um, so that would take like m maybe a couple days to uh, a day or two to get filled, basically. Yes. So no. Let's say you you can 000. you can get it in one day, but you will shoot yourself in the foot for it because your price will be not that good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so a uh, question coming in about how did you manage stress uh, as an institutional trader? Oh, then it's not that um, kind of a big deal because, you know, you can enter the market in too long because somebody told you you go long. And if the market afterward going short, it's not your head that is rolling. It's the head um, from the analyst who is rolling. So it's pretty easy, I have to say. <laughs> it's not that not big of a stress, I think, because it's not my fault. And to get good prices, um, did the, uh, if I do not get good prices, this is my fault. But, you know, it's... I th I thought uh, I think it's not that difficult to get good prices because you are so big you can literally move the markets in a specific way you want all the time no but most of the time you can find ways to move the markets in your in your way and in your advantage of course not doing the open session not doing the closing session or against the ECB fixing it's not working there of course or the London fixing but doing um, times like lunch or so you can definitely move the markets in your way and it, it, it's it's not that hard i think in the forex market in other markets i do not know and i never traded other markets as an institutional player so i do not know what what it's like to be an institutional trader in the s p 500 or in the nasdaq but um, for the forex spot market it's not that kind of hard i think it's more crazy the long hours you have to work this is more crazy because you work through the German session, it starts at 8. Uh, I mean, you need to be at the desk uh, at 6 and you work till 23 or, or yeah, 24 o'clock. So basically you work like uh, 16, 17 hours a day. This is more like, yeah, a pain wow. in the ass. Wow. That's, uh, yeah, that, that is uh, a long time. What would happen, like, um, you, you know, if... Uh, you're given the task, like, uh, you know, get the best price you can for, uh, I don't know, let's say 25,000 uh, lots. Uh, and uh, end of the day comes and you only got filled with like, I don't know, 15 or 20,000. There are two ways. Um, you can go and put your hand, head in the sands and, uh, well, t take the book and give it to the next shift. Or you can say, okay, let's look at it. Right now I see, for example... Um, one moment, I need a picture, it's easier for me to explain. Let's say this is now the volume profile and I need to buy the market. Right now I have a position that is average price there. 
the market stands right now there. And I can now buy, for example, the last 10,000 contracts here. Then my average price moves round about, let's say, there. Then I can say, okay, perfect. I see a lot of volume is traded up here. I have right now this average price. Now I can um, definitely get a worse average price, but better than it's usually looked like. I mean, a lot of other people's got the price there. And when I get my average price now here, because I, I have just to calculate this price together with this price, and I go then around about there, then I can say, you know what? I get now definitely not a good price, but with my pre-work I did already, I am so much in the green, you know what, just push the button and everything is good. And I have a good reasonable price and I'm good for the day. And then I can enter, of course. It's just a, a numbers game. It's more mathematical than most people think. Huh. Interesting. Uh, and uh, yeah, you did your job. Uh, on to the next trade. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, it, maybe uh, it would be great, uh, uh, Marco, if you could um, talk about uh, how you st uh, started in the presentation talking about how you traded as, well, the advantages and disadvantages of the, um, you know, as a, as a institutional trader, but making the crossover to a retail trader, uh, and then how you would, um, uh, how you trade now. Uh, okay. When you start to see certain things, uh, and maybe maybe you find an example here in the in the live market, so you the, did earlier. The biggest uh, obstacle for me it was like to I need to think for myself which direction. I always got told long or short. Now I have to think for myself. This was definitely the biggest obstacle, but it was it was easy to overcome if I started to think like, hey, I know where institutional traders need to do some specific ways to enter the market. And if I just wait till I see this, then I just jump after these guys. For example, if you take now the NASDAQ, um, it was a market that was pushing upwards, upwards, upwards. It took the liquidity after that. It was a really flattening market. I mean, not a lot of people was interested in the market. Yeah, then it came a push up there into new liquidity, but it gets now sold. Perfect. If I have a market that is pushing there and it can't move the market significantly higher. I mean, it really took a lot of effort just to get the price up there. <laughs> What is with the liquidity? Do they really buy it? Maybe, I don't know. But then I see nobody is really buying. We are now selling into the liquidity. And it's the same thing I told in the beginning of our uh, webinar. When there is liquidity offered and somebody needs to sell, right now it's definitely a good price to sell because we are coming back. We have a better price for a seller. Think about a banana in, in the shop and you want to sell. Higher prices are better to sell. This is what we have right now. A good, reasonable, high price banana. And if you are a seller, then you sell it. So, and now you get liquidity. What does every institutional think right now who needs a good price and see that I can get a good price with reasonable sizes? So, for example, a lot of bananas. What you will do? Do not think as a retail trader and here to buy because somebody magically have a limit order and hold the markets. No, you need to think that an other institutional trader now can grab these bananas and get a good price and can go to his boss and say, hey, I'm finished. Uh, goodbye. Perfect. You know, this is exactly the picture. And after I see this and the market goes through the liquidity, eats through it. This would be something to enter to write to write the market into the next liquidity at least, and then just look again: do they go through it or not? This is just how I view the market, and this is not that difficult. You just have to sit on your um, um, uh, bottom yes. <laughs> ass. Okay, <laughs> can I say it? You just have to sit on your ass and wait. And this is the problem a lot of retailer. Retail traders have, they can't wait. They just want to trade directly there to there because it is so easy. It looks so awesome. I mean, you, really, if you have this trade to that one, you think about exactly going um, to the Ferrari configurator or Lamborghini configurator and just configurate. But you know, I live from trades from there 
to there and I live quite comfortably because of this. This is easy to achieve every day, almost every day, of course. But this, to this, it would be the perfection. You would be a robot. It's not likely. And this is so hard why a lot of people fail because they always want the perfection. They want to be the best sculpture and make the best thing. They want to be, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, be the best one, you know? It is desire, desirable um, or it's, it's a good thing to be a really good person, but in trading it will kill you. It is so hard because it is just one event, just one trader on this world thinks about the market should be five points higher and an institutional trader just push the market and the market will be five points higher because of one guy. How can you anticipate it? It is not possible. It is definitely not possible. So we have to look when the collective Uh, collective traders of the world are wrong, wrong positioned, or when they are ready to take their bananas at good prices. And then we enter. And this is where, for example, it is very easy to see. We just have to wait. This is um, I, right now the best way I can explain. I, I, uh, the best way how I can explain now in English. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that, that was excellent. Uh, and uh, uh, very clearly answered the question. Uh, thank you, Marco. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, um, uh, so, I mean, uh, I would li love to just continue in, in, in that vein uh, a, a, as well, but uh, I, do, I, I do have one question. Um, yes. uh, coming from the, you know, uh, the institutional side, uh, they just, the, the analysts say, hey, you know, we've got 100 lots, you need to go short uh, or you need to go long, whatever it is. Um, some of the other uh, institutional traders uh, earlier uh, this week um, talked about uh, kind of overall position mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, they're in a position and they had to be very, very uh, careful with their entry. Uh, however, on their exit, uh, it was a very different story. Uh, it was like, I want to get out now because it's going against me or whatever it is. And they just start selling. Oh, and then uh, the market goes haywire. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm wondering if you have any insights or uh, any kind of... Uh, Um, yeah, stories uh, regarding uh, that. Yeah. Entering the market is easy compared to exiting the market if you are a big player because you accumulate um, positions over 1 million um, lots in, in the markets. This is quite hard to exit, but you never exit all at once. It is, for example, the ECB is coming out or the Fed, Federal Reserve is coming out and say, uh, we do something like this, 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 so and so because of inflation, ta, ta, ta. Okay. And then you think, okay, perfect. Now I am 1 million contracts long or, or, or um, lots long. And now I have to think that uh, there is a shift in policy. And because of this shift, we can't be long with 1 million. Now we need 750,000, for example. So you need to cover 250,000. Uh, lots and then of course you have again time one two week or, or maybe three weeks to unload your position uh, positioning and you never clearly exit everything i mean we was a forex changing desk this means we we never was flat we always had some long and some short positions it is um, based on regulation it's easy to do because you have your own book and you can just take the the um The, the positions and put it on your balance sheet and then you can be long and short at the same time. Something you can't do with um, with the CME, obviously, but with Forex trading you can do it clearly easy. And so you are never flat. You're always some lots longs and some shorts and you just manage to be 60% long or 70% long and then there comes some changing moments, for example, PPI numbers or CPI numbers and then you have to change because of Uh, because of the numbers and the expectation in the future and then you change i don't know uh, five or ten percent from the overall portfolio the forex portfolio of course and then you just work your way through the charts like a wave uh, that's it so it's not uh, uh, we never had really issues but i understand if i would be for example a hedge fund manager and i have a position and now i have to exit well it would be well it would be clearly a headache. I think now about, for example, Berkshire Hathaway or Warren Buffett is exiting now, exiting now his, his uh, bank positions. 
and he needs weeks and months to exit his position because he can't just push the bottom and um, is out of it. It is not working. He really has to work for it. This is something we retail traders can do all the time. We can enter and exit all the time. And this is our, this is our biggest adventure. And it's really some of the biggest problems we have also at the same time. Because the opportunity is there. And because of the opportunity, we all trade like crazy nuts. And well, this is the reason why a lot of people really um, yeah, get something <laughs> from the markets. Yeah, yeah. No, this is this is really great, great stuff. Um, so, um, yeah. I, in, any other questions? Uh, now, Marco's been going for about an hour, uh, so uh, uh, you, you know we're gonna uh, kind of uh, you know round it out here pretty soon. Uh, but uh, would like to get to any of your questions. So. Uh, that uh, uh, put them in the uh, chat if you can, uh, and uh, I mean you've answered all of my questions that I had, uh, <laughs> Marco. So uh, and it's just fascinating to see. I mean, um, how you have this background and experience, and then how uh, you can use this in your retail trading uh, and get in and get out very very quickly and easily. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, what a what a advantage. Uh, that you have well you know everybody sees this everybody all i think almost everybody knows this also the big big problem is just that a lot of people stick to things they heard first and what do everyone hear first they hear oh there's a line um, oh, you, you look, there's a um, RSI crossover or, or something like this or MACD crossover. Oh, there's this pattern. I mean, these things exist for a reason, but we need to understand why they are existing. If we just think what is the big problem in the markets, it's always the thrive for liquidity because the big institutions are the movers. They move the market. So, and if they move the market, then this means we have to understand their problems. And their problems is always the drive for liquidity. Yes, the Forex market is definitely an, an, an other market than the S&P 500 market. We also need to consider this because the Forex market is purely institutional. There are um, uh, round about 10, uh, no, no, sorry, 80%, 75% or 85% of the first 10 tier one banks, the, the liquidity size from these banks is around about 80% of the whole day. This is awesome. In the S&P 500, it's different. Yes, they are, whole, they are big institutions, but the money behind these institutions is a lot of because of savers, also for American savers. I mean, it's pretty popular to save there and invest in an index force, investment force, and so on and so on. And these are more... Um, a, different markets we have to think about it but anyway these big institutions for example like blackrock they have to place also their orders to match for example the etf tracking in um, index with the real market and they use for example options and futures and we have to think how they do it and how they get the good liquidity that you can see on your screen. Oh, BlackRock is is um, indexing with, I don't know, 0.2% outperformance via the year. Oh, perfect. I will buy them. And this is what they try to match and to slightly outperform or be at par with uh, the index. And how they do it? Well, they do it because they find liquidity. And this is what you need to understand. Find liquidity because they move the markets. They just move the markets. And why they move the markets? Because they are always in need of liquidity. Always attention. Always doesn't mean always. It means um, a lot uh, or almost all of the time, but never always, of course. I mean, uh, the market can be also quiet and um, resting, but a lot of the time it is just a drive to hunt liquidity. I think if every one of you just think a little bit more about the liquidity part of the equation and just wait what will happen after the liquidity got hit, you will find awesome trades, really awesome trades. Just wait a little bit. I mean, we spoke shortly about this area. Uh, for example, like um, when we got short there, it's a, like a TP level. But look there, there was liquidity, we got traded through and it directly comes on the other side. Why? 
Well, they was wrong. They wanted to change their position. The market came slightly there and then directly broke down in a fast way. Why? Just the answer is obviously it's liquidity. The liquidity is it's wrong. Now they have to shift. Why not? I mean, I you get the Möglichkeit. I don't. I don't. I. Sometimes I really forget words. You get now the opportunity to exit the market uh, almost at zero dollar loss. Why then not do it? And then the market sweeps through the book, of course, because it's too much liquidity, as always. I mean, it, it's not that difficult. Just wait, waiting, looking what the big institutions do, and you will see. Wow, you see a whole different kind of trading level in front of you because the big guys or as myself i didn't know if the market was rising or falling how can i know it i don't know but i knew something else i knew what uh, how i can enter to get my position i do not know if after i'm entered the market is going to tank or to rise i don't know but i know how to get a good position size at a reasonable price and this is just the thing i also use today nobody knows if the market is falling or rising but we can just think like an institutional trader because their problem is where do where the heck do i get my liquidity that's it nothing else this is the market in a nutshell yeah wow Yeah, yeah, it's uh, really great to hear. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, we, we uh, uh, this is the kind of the heart of Bookmap. Uh, exactly. Being able to display uh, this kind of liquidity. And uh, it, so people can have better insight, make better trading decisions. Exactly. Yeah, true. So you were mostly trading from the dome then, I guess, or like uh, you're you're looking at the book, you're you're looking at uh, uh, the amount of liquidity in terms of orders uh, in the in the live in the lit book at that time. Yeah, I, I used to trade via the dome. Um, that's true, but I uh, after I, I yeah left the institutional, I traded then just with footprint charts and and use these kind of charts. And now I am moving away from footprint and using more um, book map because I like the like the um, the hybrid system of a time based chart, but also a tick chart. I mean, we see clearly it's a time based chart. When when I load now the um, the overnight session, we see you know no movement at all, but the price is moving. It's a time based chart. But it's a hybrid system. I don't know another word for it, but a hybrid, I see ticks and a time based chart. I really like it. And I, like, I also like how Bookmap is um, bringing together the, the volume, the dots. And when I zoom in or zoom out, it just um, aggregates differently these, these transactions. And this is what I like. I see on the heat map where's liquidity, where is the, the, the battlefield, that let's say it that way, the battleground, how it is changing. This is the changing liquidity. And then I see the transactions. This is for me, of course, the times and sales list. It's nothing else than a times and sales list, just aggregated. And I love this aggregation. And I am more and more going via book map to, to find my trading decisions. But of course, I have both. I use, um, uh, anyway, I also use, yeah, both. Just footprints and bookmap. But I would say now around about 70% bookmap, 30% um, the, the footprint charts. Round about that one. Uh, uh, it's, really, it's really great to hear, um, uh, uh, Marco. Uh, uh, you know, we've been talking for years uh, saying like, uh, well, your time in sales is here in the dots. Exactly. Uh, and uh, uh, it's just uh, on the price action. It's kind of uh, uh, consolidated uh, within the price action as well. Uh, exactly. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, this is really, what I really, like. I really like it. It's, it's a nice way. It's an easy way to see. Um, and it, it, it depends, of course, what I want to see. If I want to see, um, for example, big, big absorptions, I, I tend to like more the numbers. But um, to see sweeping, to see which side was aggressive, uh, aggressive uh, I mean, the markets on the upswing, it's definitely better on bookmap. You can't see it that clearly in a footprint chart. You see it here 
awesome good. If I want to see, for example, one hour of consolidation, well, yeah, then of course it is better to use a big volume profile like this here, then I see uh, how it's uh, distributed. Um, this is not that easy to see here on Bookmap because now I see a lot of dots and I have to calculate in my mind. But this is just for the overview. To trade, definitely go into Bookmap charts like this one, one minute or 30 seconds, and you are good to go. Definitely you are good to go. I would say, because I see the times and sales list unfolding. Awesome. I like it. Yeah. 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 No, really, really great. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, we've got uh, uh, maybe uh, a couple more questions and then we'll wrap it up, uh, Marco. Yes. So okay. uh, really, really thank you so much. Uh, uh, we're getting some, uh, you know, appreciation in here uh, in the chat. Uh, for your uh, your presentation. Yeah, thank uh, you. Let's see. Uh, as a retail trader, oh, well, uh, if you trade as a retail trader, do you leverage a scale in uh, uh, or uh, would you rather um, remain risk adverse uh, and enter um, and take risk off and hold a price as a runner as it moves in your favor? <laughs> um, if you want to make serious bucks, you scale into winning trades. You cut your losers um, first, I mean, really fast, but your winners, you scale into them. We are not in the game because of some, I don't know, 150 bucks. We are in the game to make thousands of bucks. And this you only can do if you enter small and then you go bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. This is what we did at institutions. I mean, we entered markets, and after we entered the markets and it was going into our direction next week or two days later, the, the boss is coming and say, well, it's running good, you know, at size, at size, at size. And we added size. And this is how we got a little position into big positions. And of course, I do this also as a retail trader. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Uh, so are you looking like, uh, what, what is, uh, you, as a retail trader, um, uh, you went through that, that example that you saw, and you wouldn't have been in the market very long. And you, if you trade, you know, enough size in there, like you could be done for the day. Um, I, I'm just wondering, like, um, uh, as a as a retail trader, like, how long are you holding, or how many positions are you taking uh, per day? Definitely not much. I try to enter around about three trades per day. Maybe sometimes I have five. But if my first trade is a winner, I stop and just enjoy the day. I left the business, I, I, I mean the, my trading career as an institutional trader, because, you know, I want to live. I, I, um, I as a human are not there to serve the markets. I think the markets is there to serve me. So if there is some winning um, present and I can take, I take them and just have my day off. I mean, I, I'm living a life. I'm not living a slave life for the markets. I think so. So if the first market is a hit, then I have just one one uh, trade for example if we i don't know why if we would have now a trade let's say short there and maybe i would enter again short here make a bigger uh, position and for example exit just here you know this is the nasdaq it's completely enough to live off of it so this is how i think but well i think that way because i am long enough in the trading game and have also a lot of capital that i can go through this process if you are new you know two to three years hustling will definitely help you but then i would say just take the gas off i i would think so i mean again i think we are that the market is here to serve us we are not there to serve the markets yeah, yeah, that's really, really great to hear. Uh, and uh, uh, how you want to make it work for you uh, and and enjoy your life. I mean, that's what exactly. we're here for. Uh, exactly. So, um, all right. Well, uh, let, I don't know if uh, uh, you want to uh, comment on what just unfolded below the three hundred and fifty level there, uh, and uh, then we can uh, we can wrap it up. So we have here six hundred seventy-five volumes there. If this was the question. Well, I mean, I, I'm just wondering if, how your ah. kind of uh, uh, outlook on the market at the moment. Ah, okay. Uh, do I have here my, I need the bigger charts to do it. One moment. Mm -hmm. or, oh, yeah. You can, 
I see yeah, no, whatever whatever you come up with. <laughs> yeah, we are at a ranging market right now. Um, I do not have more data here, sadly. Uh, but we are in a ranging market. We are at the bottom right now. So it is m more possible to trade into back into the range, I would say. Um, but, you know, a liquidity hunt down there is definitely possible. You learned it that today because uh, liquidity is, uh, let's say, the bloodstream of the market. And we, we definitely, we are... Uh, um, yeah, it, it's the bloodstream of the market, liquidity, and there's always the hunt for liquidity. And till we ha do not have a ranging market, I would say we have um, a market that is going sideways. And for example, this is definitely a market that is going sideways right now. So to take the liquidity down here, well, yeah, it would be nice, it would be good, and then I can think about trading back into the markets. But... Do not forget, I think it's already over, the Bank of Canada. And uh, some of you probably know that I always use, I don't know what, just have to go where we are now. And uh, some of you who know me knows that I always use the macroeconomic view and the sentiment view because this is the reason why institutions enter. And I do not know what they told right now, but it's definitely important what the Bank of Canada is doing. And today also the Beige Book is coming out from the Fed. Usually it is not important, but if something stands in the Beige Book that is new or not known, it will definitely move the markets. So, and something like this is, uh, this is maybe happening right now. Of course, I don't know what they told now. I need to look it up, but I would say, Purely from technical standpoint, let's trade it back into the range. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, really, really great stuff. Um, all right, so uh, I think uh, that's it, Marco. I mean, uh, uh, the bank views are starting to come in, and uh, uh, really uh, great session here. Great webinar. Uh, thank you so much for coming over and sharing with us. Thank you. Thanks. It was a pleasure. I hope the next time I will learn a little bit English. I'm, maybe I have to fly into the States and live there for two or three months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think you're making a mountain out of a molehill. It, uh, <laughs> your English is, is, is just fine. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, uh, everybody, so uh, we're going to kind of put together some of the um, uh, advice or uh, insights from some of these traders uh, into a PDF uh, and uh, be able to uh, uh, use that uh, for the competition next week. So, uh, you know, the, these are golden uh, things to, to learn in here. Uh, and a million dollars will get you in enough trouble. Uh, you'll, you will have to trade differently. If you're going to be trading the NASDAQ, for sure. S&P, you'll slip it against yourself a few uh, uh, ticks or so, but uh, 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 NASDAQ for sure, uh, you will have to use, you will have to trade differently. Definitely. Right? So, uh, recordings will be available uh, in about 48 hours uh, from these, uh, these webinars, uh, just so you guys know. And uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, come and view, uh, when, did, when do you, uh, your um, uh, sessions are, uh, what time? Uh, they're in German. Uh, here on on Bookmap in in the uh, Discord room, uh, but uh, what what time of day is it? Or, or what oh. day is it, Marco? I forget. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's the German time I have here. So right now you see it is seventeen o'clock and eighteen minutes. I mean, um, I have the German. I, uh, of course, I have the German time here on my charts. Ah, right, right, okay. So uh, yeah, let's course. let's see here. If I look, uh, I think it is. Uh, I forget. Um, in, anyway, uh, at 17, so uh, minus five, uh, that would be uh, uh, at, at noon, uh, I think, right? Oh, uh, you, or, uh, minus uh, six, you, you minus mean, six. You, minus you six. mean when, when the, the, um, the, the session it's will 15. be closed? It's 20, 22 o'clock in Germany. Ah, okay, okay. Yes. Uh, just uh, so people, if they, if they want uh, more uh, uh, and ask you questions, etc., uh, they can reach out to you there uh, or in your chat room as well uh, here in 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 Bookmap uh, Discord. Exactly, we have that this German um, Bookmap um, room where it is. One moment, I need to uh, one one thirty uh, East Coast time uh, on 
Mondays is what I have here. Exactly. It's um, in exactly yeah. On Monday we have this uh, ninety thirty in Germany, and yeah, it, there, there's a calendar at Bookmap where there, there we can see. But next week, you know, I'm not at home. I'm out for Monaco, so um, I, I'm not at home. Sorry. So we have to wait. In two weeks, I'm back for the Bookmap webinars. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So thank you so much, Marco. Yeah. It was a pleasure, definitely. It was was nice. Made fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope uh, you learned well, uh, you learned something, and I hope every um, we we answered every question. And I would say next time um, we do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds great. Awesome. Excellent.